Hi, I'm Rachel James. Um, I'm a singer-songwriter and a classically trained pianist. I'm going to be instructing you through 30 days of piano lessons. Basically, these are going to be short, simple lessons um, that will hopefully guide you and teach you the basics so that you can continue to learn on your own or from an instructor or start to play if you um, need to. There are a lot of different options. Learning basic piano chords, um, just kind of the basics can get you started and then you can experiment on your own. This first lesson today, I'd like to start with giving you a little bit of the history of the piano, taking a really good look at what it looks like, the inner workings of the piano, how it functions, and um, why it's such a marvelous instrument. So let's delve right in. Uh, let's start with a definition for a piano. There are quite a few definitions. There are many ways to look at it, but a really basic one is it's a musical instrument with a manual keyboard and actuating hammers that strike wire strings, producing sounds that may be softened. Um, this is a, a, a very, very, very at, at the basic core of how the piano works. It's a stringed instrument with hammers that strike it. You can use what we call the sustain pedal to, um, on the damper pedal to soften it, um, to uh, make the notes ring out farther. Um, there are so many different sounds that you can produce with a piano because of all of these options. Uh, not to mention the instrument itself, I personally think is the most beautiful instrument. Uh, a lot of people use it as decoration. It's just uh, lovely. The first stringed instrument was a harp. And I don't know if you've ever noticed this about harps, but they're actually shaped like the piano. Um, just they sit upright and they're, they're plucked strings. So if you think about it, um, the harp has the strings being plucked with the fingers. The piano has the strings being um, strike with hammers. So basically the same principle was involved, just um, the piano gives you a little bit more option. Um, around the middle of the 12th century, we find the keyed monochord, uh, which was developed further, several strings being added, until eventually we recognize the clavichord. And if you've ever taken a music appreciation class or music history class, you've been introduced to the clavichord. Definitely sounds different than the piano. It definitely, again, has less options, less keys, but it was kind of one of the beginning steps towards the creation of the piano that we have today. Um, by approximately 1400, the clavichord had about 10 strings, and in earlier examples, two notes or more were produced from that string or pair of strings by making two or more tangents contact the same string or pair of strings at different points. This type is termed fretted, or in German, gebunden. Um, a later type in which each note has its own string or strings is called a Bundfeld clavichord. The clavichord is the simplest and usually the smallest of string keyboard instruments. It's rather like an oblong box with the keyboard running nearly the length of one long side and with the horizontally placed strings almost parallel to that side. The small rest pins and bridge are at the right hand side and the strings are permanently damped at their left hand ends by a strip of felter cloth. The strings are struck from below by small pieces of metal shaped like a screwdriver blade, which are fixed to the backs of the key frame as tangents. The year 1709 is the one most sources give for the appearance of an instrument which can truly be called a pianoforte. The writer Scipione Maffei wrote an article that year about the pianoforte created by Bartolomeo Cristofori, who had probably produced four gravisambali called piano e forte, or harpsichords with soft and loud. So harpsichords are also another keyed instrument, um, but with soft and loud options was a new idea to them. So before they didn't have the ability to create um, different levels of sound. And all of a sudden there was this new creation. Um, this instrument featured the first real escapement mechanism and is often called a hammer harpsichord. The small hammers were leather covered. It had bicords throughout and all the dampers were wedge shaped. By 1726, he seems to have fitted a stop for the action to make the hammer strike only one of two strings, and he had produced about 20 pianos by this time. Um, then he's kind of presumed to have gone back to making harpsichords, probably because there was a lack of interest in his pianos, <laughs> which is too bad. Um, three of his pianos remain around today, one with four octaves, um, and we will go over what octaves are very shortly in these lessons. Dated 1720 is in New York. One with four and a half octaves from 1726 is in Leipzig, Germany, and there is one in Rome from 1722. 
There are approximately 10 plucked instruments surviving today with the name Cristofori on them. The piano continued on its way into the instrument we see today, which has eight octaves, um, sustained pedals, um, and lots more tonality options than previous pianos um, and piano types have in the past. It's a, an extremely versatile instrument. You find it in almost every type of music out there. Um, it can be played in so many different ways. In fact, I know people who take upright pianos um, take the back side off of them and hit the strings from behind in order to create different noises, which is kind of a crazy way to use the piano, but you'll find that this instrument is um, extremely versatile, extremely exciting. Hopefully these lessons will inspire you to continue your learning. And now that you know a little bit of our piano history, what it's about and how it works, we're going to delve right into the lessons. So we'll see you tomorrow. Hope you're excited.